This is Kathy Rashido and, and Sarah Ryan, and, and we, we are the, the women, women at the Well. well. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today on this beautiful Pentecost Sunday. Um, we have a little, uh, <laughs> we're having a little technical difficulty. If you're hearing us you know, echo in the background, but uh, Sarah's getting that under control now. But I just want to wish you all a very beautiful, happy, holy Pentecost Sunday. We are very joyful today. It's uh, it has been raining for God knows how long. <laughs> God does know, but the sun finally came back today on Pentecost Sunday, and it's been just a, a joyful, joyful day for us. Um, Sarah and I were uh, sitting here talking about the royal wedding yesterday, and she made a really good point. You know, it was just a great time to feel, first of all, the love that was coming through the whole ceremony. And to know that something beautiful can happen in our lives. You know, that our whole lives can be changed in one day, in one moment. You know, and I guess that's the point. You know, the, the Holy Spirit also does that. You know, he, he changes. If you saw the, the ceremony, I just thought the, the, the homily was beautiful about love. And the different ways uh, the preacher expressed the love that was going to happen between them that has happened, and that's why they were there, and the, the future of their love, and the love of Christ, and how that love is incorporated into the family, into the marriage, you know, and uh, and that's through the Holy Spirit. You know, the Holy Spirit is our right arm. It's 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 how we know the Lord. It's, it's how we know the truth. It, it gives us those moments of knowing when we are truly loved, we are truly blessed, uh, we are, are filled with faith, hope, and love. And I think it's a great day to celebrate the church and a great day to celebrate love. So I'm going to give it to you, I Sarah. was saying to Kathy earlier how, while we were discussing it, how beautiful it is because you can see how in an ordinary day, in an ordinary life, something extraordinary can happen. Mm -hmm. In the mundane, in the usual. I had just recently read about, um, I was reading about the man that was laying at the pool for 38 years, and he was just laying there all that time. And that day that Jesus came by was just like every other day that he had been laying there for 38 years. It was an ordinary day at an ordinary time, and that man wasn't expecting anything to happen to him, and yet, in that ordinary day, something extraordinary happened. Jesus touched him, and he was healed. So sometimes I think what I'm trying to say is that, you know, when we think nothing, nothing can happen, everything's the same old, same old, and nothing's going to happen, I think that that's a beautiful example of how God can step in and change everything. Just change everything. And that's why on this beautiful Sunday, this Pentecost Sunday, where we give honor to the Holy Spirit and to the birth of the church, how we we come to the realization of, of, of what it means to live in the Spirit, to live our lives that way, filled with the Spirit. And when we're filled with the Spirit, we can come to expect the unexpected in the everyday. Because the Holy Spirit gives us life. It resuscitates us. It breathes on us. And it brings us back to where we should be. Back to the Father. So, on this beautiful Pentecost Sunday, I'd like to say how, how blessed we are that our God, our Father, has thought of everything, everything, everything for us, and has given it all for us. We are truly, truly blessed. We have the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We have the fruit of the Holy Spirit. We're taught how, you know, we're, we're, we're given the means and the way to live a holy life by following the promptings of the Holy Spirit. 
It gives us that joy, that peace, that, that kindness, gentleness, everything we need to live a godly life, a Christ-centered life. And so it's good to recall and to spend time in the presence of the Holy Spirit, saying, come Holy Spirit, come, come Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come and fill this atmosphere so that we can be changed and renewed and refreshed. Kathy was saying when she came in, it's light out right now. And usually when we come together at this hour, it's dark outside. So we can see that spring is here and we can actually hear the birds still singing at 8 o'clock at night. You know, spring is broke forth, and the, and winter has gone away. So we're you know we're in that new springtime, a new springtime. Come, my lovely one, come. It's from the Song of Songs. Yes. You know, actually, they, they read that at the wedding. You yes. know, I thought that was beautiful. What a what a scripture to select. You know, because it's just all about love. You know, the love of Christ for His church, the love of a man for a woman. You know, just the. Anybody that's ever been in love knows those words, you know, can read those words and understand them, you know, how beautiful their garden is and how beautiful the, the gardener wants to spend time in that garden when we make it beautiful, when we spend time in prayer and in relationship with God, you know. I, uh, me and Sarah were discussing the other day, uh, we both watched the same thing on TV, uh, a um, evangelist named Christine King. And um, she said something very, that struck me. You know, she spent um, the first 12 years of her life as an abused child. And she had just celebrated her 50th birthday. She said, I can either live out of the 12 years of woundedness or the 38 years of pressing on towards God. And I thought that, wow. That is such a revelation. You know, that people need to hear that. Because all of us are wounded, let's face it. You know, we've received wounds at some time or another. But we're know. not defined by them. Exactly. We're and, not defined by them. Right, right. And um, she actually pointed us towards Luke 17, 32. And she said, Jesus gives us three words. Remember Lot's wife. And I said, oh, you know, I'm thinking about that. Only three words in that verse. And there is only three words in that verse. <laughs> she said, remember Lot's wife. In other words, don't look back. Don't look back at those 12 years. You know, stay in the present. Stay in today. The gift of today and the beauty of this day and what it brings. You know, the past, that's gone. That's dead. You know, if, if you long for what used to be or live in it, you're living in dead grace. That's dead. The grace is today. The graces are new every day. The spirit is new every day. And the flesh is new every day. God of the days left behind. And she referred to Philippians 8, 13 to 14. Just one thing. Forgetting what lies ahead, but straining forward to what lies... Oh, I'm sorry. But yes, forgetting, forgetting what lies behind but straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. You know, what good is dead salt? It doesn't season anything. That's why you are the salt of the earth. You are flavor. You flavor God's creation by pressing on, pressing on into this new day. Pressing your flavor, your favor, your presence into the world, leaving an imprint, God's imprint. And that just, you know, when I was sitting there with that scripture, what she had given us, you know, it just, the words just started flowing, and it was like, wow, it just made such perfect sense. It was one of those aha moments, you know, that, you know, you know, you, you always live in the, you try to live in the day, and you try to, um, grow 
you know, but you still have those memories. We all have memories, you know, that are hurtful or have wounded us, but I used to live at those. But when you know the Holy Spirit, you can't help but press on. You can't help be that new creation the Spirit is creating you today and every new day. So then you can live the scripture, I no longer live, but Christ Jesus lives in me. Mm -hmm. And I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Because when you live out of those wounds, you live out of bitterness and resentment. But when you allow the Holy Spirit to come in, then you can live out of the fruit of the Holy Spirit, which is love, joy, peace, kindness, meekness, gentleness, generosity, joy, and self-control. So that that's what, that's what we're called to do, to press towards that, to press in, to push past, and to live in this beautiful present moment that's called the present because it's a gift. That's why we call it the present. And God gives us everything we need for that day. He showed us that when he took the Israelites in the desert and he fed them manna. He gave them what they needed for the day. When they tried to, you know, hoard it and take it and save it, it got rotten. They weren't able to do that because we're not meant to hold on. We're meant to let go and move forward. Press forward run the race because Jesus Christ is the prize that we're all going towards he's the reward the great rewarder because we long to hear those words come my good and faithful servant come come my beloved come he wants to rejoice over us he wants to love on us you know, and if you're in a place where you don't feel very loved or lovable, you know, let him come and get you. You know, let, let him, you know, I had an image, uh, I was listening to the, this song, Reckless Love, and, and it's a beautiful song, and I, and I just love the words, and, and, and it says, before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. And it goes down a little further, and it talks about, oh, it, you know, about the, the reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, and leaves the 99. And I'm just sitting with that song. See, songs are, are very ministering. You know, if you get some Christian music and, and just sit with it, it's, it's a vehicle. Bring you a little closer to God, you know, if your prayer time isn't what you can have or what you need. You know, put on the radio. But um, I have this image of Jesus wading through the thorn bushes, you know, taking the thorns and breaking through the mess to come and get the one he loves, scarred and ripped open. The Prince of Heaven taking the thorns from Email address is kathlifeinter, K-A-T-H-L-I-F-E-I-N-T-E-R, at yahoo.com. And 
you can text any question to us at area code 631-897-8179. That's area code 631-897-8179. And in the meantime, we pray. We pray for you and we pray for all our listeners and all our families that you may know the Holy Spirit, may feel the love of God, may feel that going out, Jesus going out for you, that one, and leaving the 99. Because you know what the 99 are doing? They're rejoicing, they're praising, they're giving God the glory. And that's, that is how God is able to go out and get you. You know, because he knows he's going to put you in a good place. He's going to put you in a family. He's going to put you united with us in the glory of praising him and loving him. So if you don't, you know, it's funny, me and my husband were fighting in the car coming home from a long trip. And um, he kind of turned to me. He said, you want to pray? Because <laughs> he knows. He knows I can't be angry with him when we pray. <laughs> so we were praying the divine mercy. And he didn't exactly know the words. And he's like, I'm going to make you a deal. I'm going to say it every day till I know the words. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, yes. <laughs> so something good came out of it. You know, and, and it's just that turning, that turning towards God. So if you're angry today, if you're lonely today, if you feel wounded, if you feel sad or depressed, just turn to God. You know, just start praising Him. The enemy can't come in. When you're praising God, when you're giving God the glory, it's impossible for the enemy to mess with you. Believe me. <laughs> we know. We speak from experience. <laughs> we do. You know, this show is called Women at the Well, and one of the reasons we, call, we named it that, and why we chose that particular name, is because of that beautiful story mm -hmm. of, of Jesus just waiting. He was there first. He was sitting and waiting for her. She was no surprise to him. He knew she was coming. And, he, and you're no surprise to him. He knows what you need. He knew what she needed. And he knows what you need. He's just waiting for you to come to him. I think there's a book called The Bad Girls of the Bible. Um, you know, and I always think of, you know, when I think of the woman at the well, and I'm like, hey, see, he, he got me. <laughs> you know, we, I, we were the original Bad Girls of the Bible. <laughs> you know, we, we have checkered past. And that God, because we know what it's like to have sinned and to be loved and forgiven. And that's and a beautiful all, thing. Yes, it is. And we also know that he said to someone who uh, much is forgiven, how much more will they love? And it's true. It is true. When you've been forgiven for much, you have such an open heart for others. Because you've been there, done that. You know the pain. But you also know the joy of coming to know Jesus and coming into that new life, coming into the life of the Spirit, coming in back to church, going back to confession coming back to family, coming back to your community, being part of again. Not being, not feeling, you know, left out and alone. I remember, I remember when I returned back to the church and I went back to confession and how I felt when I came out of that confessional. I understood what it meant to be born again and to be free and to feel clean and loved. That was the wisdom of God that he would give us that gift, the sacraments. He knew what we would need. We're no surprise to him. Somebody said to me today, do you think God's upset with all that goes on? And I, and I said, truthfully, we are no surprise to God. Nothing we do surprises him. He knows everything about us. Mm. And like a loving father, he doesn't like what we do, but he loves us. And that's the example that Jesus left us. You know, we don't love the sin, you know, but we love the person. And so when we when we're filled with the Spirit, that's when we can we can help to to lead others 
back to the Father in love with kindness, patience, gentleness, and joy. It's the spirit that makes Christ present to us. You know, we were, I, I went to a uh, funeral on Thursday, and my nine year old grandson was with me. And um, we were in the, you know, the uh, funeral home, and they were just going to do a memorial service. There was no mass attached to it, but uh, my grandson leaned over and he's like, Is there going to be a mass? <laughs> I could just feel through his voice that, you know, he wasn't up for the, the mass thing. And I get, you know, I, I was a young kid too. And I was sharing this at the uh, prayer group the other night. You know, we went to, uh, we went to uh, school and um, we were brought up in a, in a certain way, you know, in our faith. You know, you, you, you went to mass, you went to, uh, you know, your prayers, you said the rosary, you know, you, when, you, when you, you got to the church, you, you knelt on the, the kneeling, you knelt straight up, you never put your butt on the, on, the, on the pew, on the seat, you know, because that wasn't the way to do it, you know, and we were, we were um, disciplined and educated, you know, and it was a good thing because that education, that discipline, although I didn't realize at the time, was making an impact on me, an imprint in me. Although I had no comprehension really of the Holy Spirit and what was happening, I knew I was doing what I was supposed to do. And I was very glad that my parents did that for me because finally it caught up with me at one point, you know, in my life. And I knew exactly where to go, exactly who to ask. I went to Jesus. I went to the sacraments. I became steeped in that, that grace, that Holy Spirit came and help me through it. You know, we don't always get this magic, magical bam of a miracle. You know, it's, it's very rare that you see Jesus all of a sudden bam, bam. You know, got all, you know. But yes, there are miracles. But the great miracle is the beauty of how your life unfolds. It's a journey, and that journey starts whenever we offer ourselves to God in praise, in prayer, in, in our routine, and that's how we grow. You know, I'm very glad God never gave me that, you know, those miracles I asked for. You know, God, could you just do this for me now, and I'll, I'll do this to you later, you know, could you just make it this way, could you heal my family, could you make my husband nicer, could you do this, could you do that? Thank God, because you know what? He wanted me to change and be all those things. It wasn't about other people changing, it was about me changing. I had to be nicer, I had to be more loving, I had to be more prayerful. You know, and he, he let me go slowly. Remaining, you know, hopefully remaining teachable, which I guess I did because he taught me a lot. <laughs> and I think that's my prayer for myself whenever, is to remain teachable. Because the older I get, the more I realize I don't know. You know, and I want to know. I want to take that journey. And don't get me wrong, it hurts sometimes. Sometimes you, you're crushed, you know, like that olive. You know, if the olive isn't crushed, it can't produce the oil. That, that anointing. You know, we need to be crushed sometimes. And that hurts. It's, it's, it's squeezing. It's, it's this, uh, you know, when, when, when you're being crushed and the tears are pouring out, those are precious to God. Your tears are precious to the Holy Spirit. It says that He saves all of our tears. Mm. That's what the psalm says. He saves all of our tears. And He knows every one of them. What good father would, what good father wouldn't want to dry our tears or help us in that time of distress? But you know, like any good father, He knows what's the best path, what's the best way. And it's not Usually it's never my way, I've got to tell you. <laughs> you know, it's just, um, he knows he has the way for us. And Jesus is the way and the truth. So we're, um, we're just rejoicing in the Holy Spirit today, you know. And in the gift of our church, you know, it's, I, I don't know, I guess every year I just fall more deeply in love with the church. Because it's, uh, it's a journey, you know, we, we went through Lent. We came to Easter, you know, we went through the Passion, and we came to Easter, 
Then we came to Ascension Thursday, and, and we came to today, Pentecost Sunday, and the journey was magnificent. Every year it gets more and more magnificent. If you're following the journey, if you're steeped in the scriptures, if you're, you're, you're praying it through, you know, you don't have to pray every minute of every day, but you have um, to be aware that there is a family, a church, and I said the other day at a meeting, every family is a church, and every church is a family. We belong to an international family, and we have everything we could possibly need. We have every sacrament. Um, we were watching a case the other day on, on the Eucharist, the Holy Spirit in the Eucharist, and it was beautiful. We're doing this program called The Wild Goose. And, um, and it's the Holy Spirit. You know, Father said, Father Dave Pavanti, he said, the Holy Spirit makes Christ present to us. You know, um, it's like, this is Jesus. You know, when he holds up the hose and says, this is Jesus. You know, the Eucharistic miracle takes place. And, and he said, everything is being offered on that altar by the priest. You know, everything is placed on the altar. Um, so, our troubles, our, our anguish, our brokenness, our despair, the priest, he says, is praying Place, placing everything on the altar for us. And it just made me think. Like, I never thought of it that way. You know, I never thought that, you know, I guess I was, uh, you know, I don't know, thinking that, you know, I don't know what I was thinking. But I thought, oh my Lord, what a beautiful notion. And when I went to bed today, I thought about that. I'm putting everything of mine on the altar. Because everything that Jesus is, is on the altar. And I am in Christ, and Christ is in me. So, and then he said, the priest leaned over and breathed on the bread and wine. By the power of the Holy Spirit, the priest gives life. The priest gives it life by the power of the Holy Spirit. And gives us food for the journey to bring Christ into the world. The next time you're at Mass, maybe that helps a little bit, I don't know, but um, it really is such a miracle. Every every Mass is a miracle. You know, that transubstantiation that takes place, that's a big word. You know, I don't even think I know what it means sometimes. But when you put it like that, when you, when you know, that everything you have is on that altar, everything you are, every emotion you've ever had, everything you're ever going to know or feel is on that altar. And Christ is there with you. You are in Him and He is in you. And then to be able to take that into your own body, it's just a miraculous, beautiful miracle. So I hope that helps a little bit if anybody's having trouble with the man. But, um, you know, on the days that, you know, I go and out of routine and maybe I'm not concentrating or I'm not praying, you know, because I have the other things on my mind. Absolutely. I'm human. You know, but there are days you could just blow me over, knock me over with a feather, because the spirit is so present. And I pray that for you. I pray that you have that Holy Spirit experience in the sacrament. And Kathy was speaking, and, and she's talking about that moment, that moment that we come to the realization when we're at Mass, that it is no longer bread and wine. beyond what we could ever imagine to be able to take into ourselves the living God
that he wants to be with us intimately, so intimately that he becomes part of us. That's how much he loves us. And I think that is just overwhelming, just to even contemplate it sometimes is overwhelming. Overwhelming to think of such a love. Such a love. It wasn't just enough that he died on the cross, that he shed his blood, and that would have been enough. But he loved us so much that he could not leave us. Could not. Wanted to be with us. Wanted to be part of us. When we partake of him, he becomes part of our DNA. When we drink of the cup, we're drinking royal blood. Our king who died for us. So yes, it's overwhelming. It's overwhelming. And my prayer is that each of us have that beautiful encounter with him at Mass. Will we become overwhelmed? Overwhelmed love, what love has done for us. That's how the Holy Spirit works, you know, sometimes it's so overwhelming, sometimes it's just it's a gentle breeze. You know, I was listening to uh, the Acts of the Apostles today, and um, where, it said, where it started to say, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to, pro enabled them to proclaim. And then further on it said, at the sound they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused because each one heard them speaking in his own language. And they asked, you know, aren't these speaking Galileans? Are these people speaking Galileans? How does each one of us hear them in his native language? And down further it says, and yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. And I was just thinking, as it was being read, they spoke in different tongues. They didn't say they spoke in different languages. Everybody heard. heard what they needed to hear. And that's a miracle. That to me is what we need to have happen. We need to hear. You know, we do a lot of talking, but are we listening? Are we hearing the language of God? Are we hearing that language of love? God speaks in a tongue that is so different from ours, are we hearing that tongue of love? And that just kind of, you know, I love when the Spirit does that to me, you know, and, and it's all of a sudden, boom, 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 you're getting, you know, bashed. <laughs> it's a revelation. Yeah. It's yeah. revelation when God breaks through and reveals, that's the epiphany, that moment when you allow Him to speak to you, when you're so docile that you, that you can listen and have those ears to hear. Because when the word of God is being spoken, it speaks truth and life. And that's what we need to pray for also, to pray for that wisdom. Wisdom and revelation. Wisdom so that we will know and understand. And revelation so that we will know what God wants us to do and what is to come. Because he wants to prepare us to train us, to teach us. That's one of the things of the Holy Spirit. He's, a, he's our, our teacher. He's, he has so many beautiful titles, advocate, paraclete, mm. consoler. But that's, you know, and, and he wants to, in, um, in, to renew us and to animate us, bring us to life again. That was a beautiful song we sang today. Winter, you know, has worn us out. 
we're, we're weary. So we need this new springtime to bring, bring us, us back to life. Because something, something in us dies also. You know, when we spend a lot of time in that, in that, in those dark months. So this is a time for to be revived and renewed, so that we can be ready for that new springtime, and and so that we can go forth in that new springtime. You know, John Paul, Saint John Paul II talked about. You know the springtime of evangelization. In Oregon, hungering for it, thirsting for it. And then wanting to share it with everyone you encounter because it brings life. It brings life. And yes, a lot of us have gone through a weary time. So we need to be rejuvenated, resuscitated, renewed, refreshed. Same way the apostles are today. You know, they, they had to wait for the Holy Spirit. You know, it was it was a coming. It was, you know, an, an anticipation. You know, they didn't have it easy before the Holy Spirit came. They didn't have it easy after the Holy Spirit came either, but they had the Holy Spirit, which made the difference. They knew what they knew. And they were going to go out to the world and, and, and spread the word. You know, before, St. Augustine says, um, talks about Peter. And he said he alone denied Christ because he alone had stayed with the one he denied. How much more readily could the others have denied him who fled before they could be questioned and did not hold fast? You know, Peter was caught up because he stayed. You know, but look what happened after the denial, after the resurrection couldn't help but dive into the water after his Christ to dive into that new baptism to follow the love of Christ and then once the Holy Spirit came it was all over <laughs> yeah, it was raised to a new life yeah. yeah so it's a journey and after that there was no stopping him because mm. after that he was on the move because the Spirit will move you it yeah. will take you on a journey. It will move you. It will take you places you could never have imagined you would go. Mm -hmm. Well, you'll have encounters you, you never would have imagined would happen. That's the beauty of living in the spirit, because that's you move and you live and you breathe in the spirit, and you allow the spirit to move and breathe in you. And so the journey. Yes. Have this uh, young man that attends the um, the spirit seminar, the, the wild goose uh, teachings, and um, he's he's not Catholic, but he comes and he loves it. And uh, at the same time, a few weeks ago, we started a rosary group at my home, and he asked if he could come. And he said to me, he's like, I don't know why they don't talk about Mary. And I was like, well. Yeah, she's the spouse of the Holy Spirit. You know, we need to have that conversation. So he came. And it was just an amazing, it's an amazing thing to watch. You know, when the Holy Spirit is working, and you, you, you kind of get to, to view it. <laughs> you know how you can see he's melting away, and, and Mary's bringing him into that, that, that beauty, that that grace, that, that Holy Spirit, you know, she's, she is the spouse and she's going to bring him right to her spouse. <laughs> and it's just, um, I just have this imagining that this, this young man is one day going to be a Catholic. I mean, it, 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 he's lovely. He's beautiful the way he is, but I just see a journey for him. And, um, I pray for him, you know, that it's God's will, whatever God's will is for him. It, it, that we're in agreement with. You'll be captivated by the beauty. Mm. 
we have so much to offer in our faith. We have so many beautiful traditions. We have body, blood, soul, and divinity present to us mm -hmm. and in us. All the sacraments, sacrament of reconciliation, which is my mainstay. You know, it's like I don't even have to go to a shrink mm -hmm. if I go to reconciliation. It's a wonderful thing. So, and um, we've seen a lot of confirmation these days and communions. These, these are the, the seasons for it. It's just such a flowering and a blossoming of our faith and bringing new mm -hmm. little children into that fold. It's, it's beautiful to see little children receive their first communion and to see these young people being confirmed. And, you know, um, I don't think I knew what was happening when I was confirmed. I mean, I knew the answers, you know, the traditional answers, but I, I don't think I felt anything like I do now. And when I really did start coming back to the church after, you know, my reversion back, it was the Holy Spirit that grabbed me. No, it was just uh, through the Mother of God. It was, it was her. It was her first. You know, you, you always have a relationship. I think your your spiritual journey kind of mirrors your earthly journey. If you have a good relationship with your mother or your father, you have a good relationship with Mary or the or, or God the Father. You know, it just seems that a lot of people lean that way. Well, I would think going. Um, through Mary is a very gentle process and um, mm -hmm. and, mo and her motherly love and her motherly um, instincts for us and what we need. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why it's, for some people it's very easy to, for that maternal love, mm -hmm. the heart, you know. And then she brings you to her son. That's, that's, that's the beauty of it. You know, she wraps you in her mantle and she swaddles you. As she swaddled the baby Jesus, and then she presents you to her son. You know, literally swaddles you, wraps you up, and presents you, blameless and and clean before the Father. And look, look. It sort of reminds me of you know, like when you watch the movie Moses, and you see the baby in the basket, all swaddled. Look. Swaddled in love. Swaddled in love, and that's what she does. She swaddles us in love. In love. We have a friend that had uh, not a great uh, childhood with her mother, and uh, it was very difficult for her to relate to the Blessed Mother. So she went through Jesus. You know, it, it's, um, if you're in a place like that, you know, there, there's all ways of God coming out and, and grab, grabbing you. And loving you, you know, it's just—he's always rescuing you. Mm -hmm. He's always rescuing you. Going out for that one, leaving the ninety-nine behind to rejoice. That's what he does. He mm -hmm. searches us out. Psalm one thirty-nine. He searches for you, he looks for you. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter where you are, he will find you because he's always looking for you. He calls you his beloved. On this beautiful Pentecost, on this day that we celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit, gift of the Church, we are so blessed with so many spiritual blessings, so many gifts, the gift of love that God gave us and His Son, and the gift of the Holy Spirit so that we would, we would know in our knowing, in our being, every fiber of our being, that we all loved. So if you're looking for truth and you're wrestling with that concept, go for it. You can never wrestle God too much. You know, God, <laughs> like Jacob wrestled with the angel, you yeah. know, yeah. <laughs> all night, you know, God will come and search you out. You know, it's, um, you know, if, if you're looking for truth, you won't go a long way before you've run into God. You know, you run into Christ. And they'll wrestle with you. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit is the giver of life, giver of truth. So, yes, and you will have an encounter with the Holy Spirit. And I will promise you that will change your life. Mm. It will change your life. It will be forever changed. Christ prayed that you be consecrated in truth. You know, that his word was truth. 
You know, we belong to the truth, not to the world. We belong to the truth. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And as long as we're standing in truth, and how do we know truth? We go to scripture. We go to scripture. We go to the, the church to look for guidance. You know? And if we can't find it there, I think John Michael Tablet used to say, we just go to Jesus. We ask Jesus, what's the truth? And he will reveal it mm -hmm. through the power of his spirit. Mm -hmm. He prayed for wisdom. The word of God says, pray for wisdom, and it will be given. Actually, it tells us to pray for wisdom and how important it is to ask for wisdom. To ask for that holy wisdom. Just ask the Father to send His Holy Spirit to you today. Just pray this prayer. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come. No, we don't have to be, we don't have to use big words and make up a long story. We just have to say, come, Holy Spirit, come. That's just how wonderful God is. He hears that small little prayer. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come. And he will come, and he will fill you, and he will change your life. It's life-giving, and it's life-changing. It's the power of his love. The power of his love. Mm. It's the way of wonder. It's the way of joy. You know, that, that joy will bring us into that wonder. It's exciting. Mm -hmm. It's exciting. Who doesn't want to be in awe and wonder? <laughs> and that's where we find it. We find it in Christ. That new life. Refreshing. Refreshment for the soul. Mm. So if you're weary and you're tired, you're lost and you're lonely, you're downtrodden and hopeless, and despairing. Isaiah 43 19 says, See, I am doing something new. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? In the desert I make a way, in the wasteland rivers. How is the Lord calling you to that something new? What does it look like? What do you do now? Now that you know he's calling you to something new. Is it to prayer? Is it to sacrament? To church? You know, we don't want to be crushed in our lukewarmness. The enemy loves lukewarmness. Because we're neither here nor there. God is calling us to something new, a higher calling. What is that calling for us? How does it look? What shape does it come in? You know it in your soul. You know it in your heart of hearts. How are we to answer that call? The call of the Spirit. The way the apostles answered the call. They went out into the whole world to tell the good news. Your whole world might just be in your living room. For your workplace, your family, your children, your spouse, your neighbor. Really, what it comes down to is the promptings of the Holy Spirit. How He's prompting you. And I think that for some of us right now, I think that He's been prompting us, and and we, you know, we're just saying, "Well, I'm not ready yet. I'm not ready." I pray today that you will be ready, that you'll just take that step and say yes. Do it afraid if you must. Do it afraid if you must. Say yes. Say yes. I don't know where you're leading me, Lord. I don't know what you're asking of me. But I do know this, Lord, 
that you will be with me through it all. You will be with me. Yes, and sometimes it won't make sense in your flesh. <laughs> all right? <laughs> I guarantee you, most times it won't make sense in your flesh. But in the spirit, it will. If you have learned how to walk in the spirit, to pray in the spirit, to ask the spirit, you will know it'll make sense. And just know that the words of Jeremiah are, I know the plans I have for you. They are for good. They are to prosper you. They are not to harm you in any way, but they are to give you a hope beyond hope. My plans for you, they are good. They are good. So allow him to lead you. Allow him to direct your steps. Allow him to light your path. You know, the scriptures say in the Psalms that he's a lamp unto our feet. You know, so if you feel like you're stumbling or you're walking around in the dark, okay, afraid, afraid to take that step, listen to that scripture. He's a lamp unto my feet. He lights the path. Your steps. Allow him to. You know, reading that, you know, see, I'm, I'm doing a new thing that reading from Isaiah. Um, sometimes it's just the little things. You know, it might be, have you not forgiven somebody? You know, is it, um, is, is God calling you to reach out to somebody as a friend, to put the hand of friendship out? Is God calling you to be silent, to listen? Is God calling, I mean, you get to call us in big ways, you know, in big conversions, but you know, we, what is God calling you? You know, we started out by talking about the ordinary. The word ordinary. And God is calling us to live our life in the ordinary extraordinarily. As crazy as that might sound. But it's in the ordinary. Whether it's making dinner, setting a table, doing laundry, going to work, feeding the kids. Whatever it might be, that ordinary day. Driving to work taking the train, whatever that ordinariness is for you, that's where he's going to meet you in that, in that everyday, that Monday things that we do. You know, some, we're not all called to go out and, you know, preach to a thousand people or a million people, but we are called to show Christ to our neighbors to our children, to our spouses, to our co-workers. We start out in those little ways. What can you change today? What little change can you make? What little thing can you do for another? That might look ordinary and yet have an extraordinary effect on them. What little thing? What small act of kindness. What small act of generosity. What small act of love. I was just thinking about um, the author of The Shack, um, William Henry Young. And he tells a story about how The Shack came around. He, was, um, he had nothing to give his children for Christmas. So he wrote the book while he was riding the train to and from his job. He had a couple of jobs and he had to take the train. And um, he wrote that story as a present for them. And that little act of kindness. And the mundane. Yeah. In the ordinary. Came an extraordinary act. Mm -hmm. So yes. So when we look at our ordinary lives, we can realize that at any given moment, they can become extraordinary. When we're, when we're living in the spirit. Touch on the spirit. And that's what we're called to do. Live in the Spirit. That's why we pray for you every week that you will be blessed by the Lord, that His hand would be upon you, that you would have an encounter with Him at the well, 
and that you would drink from that living water and that your thirst would be for him and him alone so that he could quench your thirst that you would hunger for him and he would be the one to fill your hunger that's our prayer for you that's what we pray for you and we pray this week especially that the Holy Spirit that the Holy Spirit will overshadow you overshadow you and infuse you with his new life so that you too can become a new creation and perceive something new have an extraordinary week this week Hmm. in an ordinary day it can turn extraordinary when God himself touches you we are the women at the well and we are so glad that you are listening and we hope to hear that you will be listening to us next Sunday night at Air of Christ International Radio our um, Catholic Life International our main sponsor we just thank you for our, the owner Dominic Capito and we thank you that if you have any questions or if you have anything you would like to um, say to us Kathy will now give you again the uh The number to text is area code 631-897-8179, 631-897-8179. And you can email us at cathlifeinter at yahoo.com. That's C-A-T-H-L-I-F-E-I-N-T-E-R at yahoo.com. Have a blessed week. So please, 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 please email us or text us. We'd love to hear from you. We're praying for you. And we, the women at the well, hope you have one of the best weeks ever. Amen. Amen. Be blessed and be